Rosie Batty, thank you again for joining us on Blue Notes. I wanted to talk to you about the role of financial education in a family violence context. A report released uh, today found that 15% of women and 7% of men experience economic abuse. Um, in your experience, how can financial education help victims take control of their finances? Um, look, I think the acknowledgement that financial abuse is actually very, very prevalent and, um, and, and, and financial abuse wouldn't ever happen in isolation. There will be other forms of abuse happening as well. But financial abuse, um, I think, can, you know, certainly is a significant barrier to leaving a relationship that's violent, uh, but it also can ensure that you stay in um, poverty or financial hardship um, or extreme financial stress way after you may have left the relationship. So I think that, you know, that financial uh, ability to look at your finances and actually feel that you're um, able to plan or develop strategies to, to manage you know, your financial position in a, in a more proactive or empowered way is really important. Um, and, and I think that what we can't pick is when is the right time for someone to actually feel ready for that kind of service. And I think that's, it's just knowing that it is an important service and that at some point um, that, that it can be available to, to someone who um, is really at the, in the right place at that time. What role do you see financial institutions specifically, but also broadly uh, organisations, um, playing in, in helping understand customer hardship mm. when it comes to family violence? I think that, um, you know, this understanding that hardship can affect people very quickly, no matter what area of society they come from or what suburb they live in, this is not postcode dependent. Um, so I think that um, recognising there are different solutions at different times um, and recognising that, you know, this involves different people perhaps in, from the bank's perspective where looking at, um, you know, as a hardship response, you know, not, not, not being able to pay back loans um, or find themselves with um, credit card debt because that's what they've had to do to get them through to that to a particular place um, not being able to pay rent um, utility costs and how we respond to that and how we can actually get to respond in a empathetic manner and work constructively when a, somebody's very overwhelmed or very ashamed or um, highly stressed to actually get them through that crisis and how can we make it easier or what can we do to support them in that moment, those, that period of time that's significantly stressful. Can you expand on what more you think uh, Corporate Australia can do in this space? Yeah, look, I think there's, um, we could all do more, but I do feel that um, Corporate Australia is doing, is beginning to do a huge amount. And there are a lot of people that have been able to drive that and influence that to happen. And now there's, you know, two years ago, you know, that. I, I think it became recognised it, it was a workplace responsibility. Um, so in that two years, um, you know, it, there has been significant change um, that we're not aware of, that we can't see yet, but we have to understand it will take a, a potentially a decade. And it, this is a long-term long um, challenge. And I think that, you know, certainly, when we look at what corporations can do, I think they are very influential. They are very powerful. They hold governments to account. They have enormous influence, not just within their own staff, but with their clients, their customers, their business associates, their suppliers. So truly, if a very influential organisation wants to drive change, it has enormous power and capability to do so. Thank you for joining us on Blue Notes, it's always a pleasure. Thank you.